Hey everybody, Charlie Forty here. Teach all you can trust. Back with the Walking Dead Rose Five video, featuring Maggie. All out. Yeah. Maggie is a medic role survivor made to keep your team alive, but to give it some offensive and defense pressure through heals and buffs to overpower your opponent. At this point in time in the game, base stat wise, we can see she is a first generation stat survivor, as she is in the 4800 total base stat range, while the new generation of survivors are around 5300, 5400 total base stats such as Alice and Eric. This doesn't mean she is a terrible survivor, though, as it all depends on where you are in the competitive ladder. If you are a new player and or in a casual faction of non-premier survivors where you hardly ever see a top 10 factions in a war, I would say Maggie holds more merit compared to the top 1% using her. Maggie's leadership skill is an offensive and not made for defense as this specifically targets a type of survivors being ranged and instead of buffing your team regardless of what the enemy has. 40% attack and 40% defense versus range should give you a nice yellow and blue setup for smashing your ranged enemies. Her AR is loaded as it does four things and like I mentioned before, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few months down the road we get a premier survivor that has like eight sentences in their adrenaline rush and I'm shocked she didn't have a revive considering the last few survivors that have been brought to the game. The first thing this Adrenaline Rush will do is heal your team for 55% HP, which is pretty powerful. After the team is healed, they will get 75% attack for one turn, which spells, use your Adrenaline Rushes now. After the team gets Viagra, they will then be given 45% defense for three turns, which is pretty kick-ass. Not only are those buffs extremely useful in raiding, but everywhere else in the game, there will be something that this Adrenaline Rush will benefit you with, whether it be something in the world map, road map, or legendary survival road maps. When Maggie adrenaline rushes and after the team rubs Diosporin on themselves, takes their Viagra and applies harder calluses to the skin, then Maggie will remove any confused crowd controls to the team. So this is a pretty loaded AR for a medic. For active to me, I don't find useful while raiding, but everywhere else in the game, it will hold a lot more merit. Consider you get 30 AP per attack, then you can use her adrenaline rush turn 4. So use her active turn 3 to make sure to give 3 people on the team 50% defense and give herself 35% AP, which is 27 AP, so she can be ready to use her adrenaline rush turn 4. If you are not versing a hard hitting defense team, then giving 3 of your teammates 50% defense and giving yourself AP isn't really that beneficial, as you probably would be better off using a crowd control active to prevent the enemy from healing or reviving. Granted, there is some synergy here. As after she uses her active, three people will have 50% defense. And the next turn, the whole team will have a 45% and 50% defense with a pretty high uptime, which seems like it would be better suited for world maps, road maps, and survival road. If you were to come to here with 40 AP per attack, you would be in a conflict with using her active or using her adrenaline rush come turn three, which her adrenaline rush will always be the better choice. Maggie's weapon is pretty basic as there is no point in taking a double attack weapon or really anything worth offensive as her adrenaline rush doesn't even do damage. So I feel it would be best to use her as a crowd controlling medic by placing in pair when attacking. To make sure we can use her adrenaline rush turn three with AP when attacking leadership skill, we will want to place AP when attacking on her weapon so we can get the team beefed up ASAP. As for the stat part of the weapon, going HP or defense I feel would do well for an attack team, as her AR heals for 55% HP, so high health pools will benefit her, and she also buffs defense by 45%, so having defense on your weapon can work as well. Combat mods here will be tanky with some team support. A defense set in health combat mod or vice versa is a good start for her stats. Seeing as her adrenaline rush does no damage, it's safe to make her get some defensive combat mods. If you happen to use her as a leader, then defense versus red or blue are great choices. If you don't use her as a leader, then I still feel you would bring her versus a lot of ranged teams. And in the chance you use her versus green-blue teams such as Dante, then defense versus blue might be the better overall choice. Stun resist if we verse ranged teams that have reds or green-blue teams with stun on attack green weapon. AP down from when we finger blast someone down, we will want some sort of AP manipulation, especially if we get an impair when attacking proc on our weapon. This will help if the enemy has a recover impair so that even if they recover the impair, the AP down should cause enough disruption so that an adrenaline rush won't be used. 
See, against Weave and a pair when attacking weapon, and that her Adrenaline Rush cures Confuse, we can allow her to put on a helmet, so no bangs to the head will make her confused and start to slap up her own team. Seeing if they fail to confuse her, she can remove any confuses that last more than one turn, which can be helpful in certain situations. For team comps, I'll be doing two attack teams and one defense team. Attack team one is not a premier team, as this can be accessible for a lot of players. The idea here is to have one Adrenaline Rush ready on turn three, being Alpha which has burst damage and a confused crowd control to help buy us a turn. With Romanov taunt 3 to 3 on turn 3 it should give us the ability to get by turn 3 without the enemy using too many adrenaline rushes that would otherwise devastate our team. Once this team is ready to pop off, we have Maggie heal and buff the team with 75% attack to then allow Sandy or Connor to lower defenses. White to come in next and remove any positive defense stats with burst damage to lower defense survivors. Romanov right after to clean up two more. If the enemy happens to have someone still alive that can cause some serious issues, then we have Alpha's AP down for that same turn. And after that, we have Romanov, Sandy, Dwight, and Alpha, all with Adrenaline Rush controlling actives. In the case we need a focus, we will replace Sandy with Connor. Second attack team, we will go full blue force so that come turn three, we are ready to pretty much end the fight. Disarm is shown to lead the way so the rest of our team can get by without being hit from a defensive special weapon mod. With being able to get 40 AP per attack, the two people that will not be ready to Adrenaline Rush come turn 3 will be Tyrese and Andrea. But we will only need them to get hit one time to gain 5 AP to be ready to use their Adrenaline Rush as turn 3, which is a pretty good chance of happening. If you want a 100% guarantee, then place an AP at the start of the wave weapon on them, though I do prefer a double attack for Tyrese for decapitate purposes. Once Maggie heals and buffs the team, and you have Andrea, Dwight, Tyrese, and Disarm shown ready to Adrenaline Rush, then uh, the fight's definitely looking in your favor. As for a one defense team, we will have a timeout medic and tank team. If people fail to bring a neutralizer, this could spell trouble for whoever they want to focus down. Re-revise creating high pressure so that the use of actives and adrenaline rush need to be used in a specific way so that the enemy does not find themselves back to square one with the people that they just killed being brought back to life now with bonus HP. Colt give us turn one control, stun weapons on Dante and Violet for turns one and two for stun control, Turn 3 for Adrenaline Rushes, and potentially Princess is active if she doesn't use her Adrenaline Rush. And with AP when taking damage leadership skills, we will bring in Violet for the bonus HP to make sure that if anything goes right for our team at the start, then it's an uphill battle if the enemy doesn't have bleeds and burns to ignore the bonus HP. And that's going to wrap up the video of Maggie All Out. Let me all know if you ended up getting Maggie throughout the event, and what team comps are you currently using her in. But other than that... Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, made you laugh, boy, anything positive, please can I score a chop, like, subscribe button, make sure you comment down below. Sports really appreciate it. And on that, I'll catch you on the next video. Bye bye.